This animation describes and illustrates the procedures for performing a brake stroke mark and measure. Before beginning the mark and measure procedure, confirm that you have all of the required personal safety equipment and tools as shown. Ensure that the vehicle is parked on level ground. Ensure that the vehicle's wheels are properly and securely chalked. Release the vehicle's parking brakes. Ensure that the vehicle's supply system air pressure is stable between 90 and 100 psi. If pressure is below 90 psi, start the engine and allow system pressure to rise to 100 psi. Shut the engine off. If pressure is above 100 psi, apply and release the service brakes until system pressure falls to 100 psi. It is strongly recommended that the ignition keys be removed from the vehicle during any brake stroke measurement procedure. Exit the vehicle and perform the following steps at each brake chamber. Identify and note the brake chamber type and whether it is a standard or long stroke chamber. You will need this information to determine the brake chamber's stroke limit as per the CVSA guidelines. Standard and long stroke brake chambers are identified by the shape of their service and spring brake air connection delivery ports. The delivery ports on standard stroke brake chambers are round. The delivery ports on long stroke brake chambers are square. Standard and long stroke service brake chambers are identified by the shape of the rear air chamber housing. On standard stroke service brake chambers, the rear housing is smooth or has a raised round shaped section. On long stroke service brake chambers, this raised portion is square around the delivery port in the center of the air chamber housing. An orange trapezoid tag may also be used to identify a long stroke air chamber. Accurate brake stroke measurement cannot be achieved unless all related components are securely mounted, accurately positioned, and in fully functional condition. Ensure that the push rod is fully retracted. A push rod that is not fully retracted indicates that an underlying mechanical problem exists, either within the brake chamber itself or foundation brake assembly. It can also indicate that the push rod is too short. Any such mechanical issue must be corrected before an accurate brake stroke measurement can be achieved. Refer to the brake chamber, automatic brake adjuster, or brake manufacturer's service manual for appropriate inspection, maintenance, and repair procedures. The vehicle must not be driven until all necessary repairs are completed and proper brake stroke has been confirmed. Confirm that the brake chamber and all automatic brake adjuster brackets are properly and securely mounted. Also check for wear of the clevis pin and brake adjuster clevis pin bushing. A worn clevis pin and or clevis pin bushing will result in unwanted adjuster free play in the system, which will adversely affect automatic brake adjuster stroke limits. If Holdex Saba or AA1 automatic brake adjusters are installed on the vehicle, check the mounting of the control arm pin and the condition of the control arm bushing. These components must be in good condition and properly mounted to ensure proper automatic adjuster function. On Holdex AA1 automatic brake adjusters, ensure that the installation indicator pointer is within the indexing slot on the adjuster face when all brakes are released. This indicates that the brake adjuster control arm is properly set up. If any hardware is loose, damaged, worn, or missing, it will be necessary to secure or replace the affected components. You must then check the brake adjuster setup procedure before attempting any applied brake stroke measurement, again as per CVSA guidelines. Refer to the appropriate Haldex, Saba or A1 automatic brake adjuster installation and setup procedures manual. 
You can now begin the brake stroke mark and measure procedure. With both the service and parking brakes released, and with all push rods fully retracted, carefully mark each push rod at the face of its respective brake chamber. Verify that the supply system air pressure is between 90 and 100 psi and make and hold a full service brake application. Use an appropriate brake pedal hold down device placed between either the steering wheel or seat and the brake pedal. If no such device is available, you will need to enlist the assistance of a second person to make and hold a full service brake application. Now, measure the distance that each push rod has stroked by measuring the distance from the face of each brake chamber to the mark previously placed on the push rod. Be sure to place the measuring device firmly against the brake chamber face. It is important to understand that you are measuring the brake chamber stroke under an actual hard service brake application, which will take up not only the brake shoe to drum clearance, but also all of the mechanical free play or wear within the foundation brake. This is, therefore, a true measurement of the applied brake stroke as per the CVSA guidelines. If the stroke measurement from the face of the brake chamber to the mark placed on the push rod exceeds the specified maximum applied brake stroke for the brake chamber, and you are certain that the initial installation and setup of the automatic brake adjuster is correct, the cause of the brake overstroking is excessive foundation brake wear. The vehicle must not be put into service until all appropriate repairs have been completed. For more information, refer to the CVSA out-of-service criteria for the total number of defective brakes that would constitute an out-of-service vehicle. If the applied brake stroke on all chambers is within the allowable CVSA guideline limits, the vehicle can be put back into service. Keep in mind that the foregoing procedure does not in any way confirm whether or not an automatic brake adjuster is functioning properly. If there is any concern as to whether the brake adjuster is functioning correctly or not, refer to the appropriate brake adjuster service manual for the correct setup procedures. Also remember, an automatic brake adjuster must never be manually adjusted or used as a manual adjuster, except in cases where it may be necessary to make an emergency adjustment in order to remove a disabled vehicle from a roadway.